You've seen the power of dropkick at 12 pounds. And now you've seen that same might on display at 3 pounds. We've become the new two-weight Florida Man Champion. And I know you want to know what makes that happen. Here at Dropkick Dojo, we have two mottos. The first one, keep it simple, stupid. If you aren't going X games with your bot yet, then why try to perform some advanced calculus just to get your bot moving? Here we stick with wheels in direct drive. No need to mess around with swerve drive or tacking on those dorky omni wheels. We're bending bots with the basics. Motto number two, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. If you already have a bot with a decent weapon or drive, then don't change that aspect of your bot. I've seen plenty of robo-dorks change their robots every tournament in the name of bleeding edge technical innovation just to get their butts kicked by Giga Chad trad bots like mine that use traditional methods of motion and weaponry. If you try to change too much at once, you're gonna end up a box of bolts. Adding a new name and number to your bot is never gonna help if Bedwetter 6.9 keeps getting new iterations every round and never gets any better. You learn by making mistakes and then fixing them. Not that we've ever done that, no, no, definitely. Now let's get into the nitty gritty and start shopping with our Florida bros over at Palm Beach Bots. I'll have all the links right here. See? You see them? They're up below the video. That's where they'll show up. They're my number one shop for beetle and ant weight parts. How are you so-called botless builders supposed to get your motors running if you ain't even got motors picked out yet? If you plan on using some big old wheels like mine, you need low speed, high torque motors. I suggest you use the Fingertech Mega Sparks from Palm Beach Bots at the lowest KV setting possible. For those with tiny little wheels, I'd suggest the same but a higher RPM for every inch smaller you go. A kicking contribution from your Florida man, Grandmaster. Make sure to add Loctite wherever you have screws, unless your motor backs right out. Definitely didn't win that one from experience. Next up, I know you wanna get that grip. There's no better way than using Banebot's wheels and hubs. I personally use the compliant black wheels because they have plenty of strength. But if your wheels are a little more protected and you want a little more grip, I'd go with one of the lighter variants. Kick tip number two. If your bot's looking a little chubby and you need to go on that robo keto diet and lose a little weight, you might want to switch over to the finger tech wheels. They're made of foam, so they're much lighter and you can coat them with latex rubber on the outside. So you get the same amount of grip with a little less weight. They are less durable though, so make sure you protect them. We're not going to give away the secret sauce on exactly what weapon motor we use, but make sure that if you've got a larger weapon like ours, you're running a lower KV motor. Now if you've got a tiny little weapon, you might want to run a higher KV motor to really get that thing revving. You might have the motors now, but that doesn't mean anything if you can't control yourself. Pick up a pair of drive ESCs and an ESC for that weapon motor of yours. The two drive motor ESCs don't have a BEC, so make sure when you pick up that weapon motor ESC, you pick up one that has a BEC included so you can apply energy to that receiver. I always pick up an ESC with a BEC built into it for my weapon motor. Palm Beach Bots also has a great selection of belts and pulleys to transfer all that unbotly power. While you're there, you can find the nastiest blades to terminate the competition in their 6 and 8 inch terminator blades. Those blades are asymmetric, so they'll tear through the competition. But before you go smacking other robots around, make sure you hit that subscribe button to join us on our journey to domination and to see other videos that can teach you about building bots like these. Back to it. If you've been wondering what keeps this Florida man powered up all day long, look no further than the Palm Power batteries. Dropkick uses a 4S battery. Palm Beach Bots is smart. They didn't pack too many batteries on their website, so it's easy to find the right size for you. Another quick kick. 
for every weight class you go up, you got to add about one S. So I'd say for 150 gram robots, one to two S is fine. For one pound robots, two to three S is fine. For three pound robots, you're going to want to run about three to four S. And for the big boys like drop kick, you're going to want to run four to five S. For every S, there's a cell in that battery. So if it's a 4S battery, there's four cells in that battery pack. Now for what you'll find at the center of every bot. We find his nucleus. And the nucleus of every bot is its receiver. I always go with the pair of the Turnigy FSI-6 transmitter and receiver. I've even seen heavyweight robots run these before, so your little beetle weight will be just fine. Now last but not least for all you robo noobs out there, make sure you buy connectors, power switches, and extra screws for your robot. You'll want those extra screws in case you forgot that quick tip about loctiting everything together and they came right out during the fight. Kind of like ours did, not really. Okay, we're not going to talk about that. We're not going to talk about that. <laughs>